What is your name, please? My name is Harmon Lovelace. This is my wife, Lola. What is your name, please? My name is Lola Lovelace. This is my husband, Harmon. What is your name, please? My name is Lola Lovelace. My name is Harmon Lovelace. Two of these couples are imposters. Only one couple is the real Mr. and Mrs. Lovelace and is the only couple sworn to tell the truth. Now, here is our host, Bud Collier. Thank you very much. Good evening and welcome once again to To Tell the Truth, brought to you this week by Arid Cream Deodorant, America's largest selling deodorant. Don't be half safe, be completely safe. Use Arid Cream Deodorant to be sure. Now may I introduce our panel. First, the talented and beautiful Polly Bergen. Next, the man who opens in once more with feeling at Coconut Grove in Florida next Tuesday night, November 3rd, Robert Q. Lewis. And then our lady lecturer, who will be in Fall River, Massachusetts, Monday night, Miss Kitty Carlisle. And finally, the star of the Broadway hit, Golden Fleecing, Mr. Tom Poston. Now, panel, re-examine your copies of this affidavit as I read it. We, Harmon and Lola Loveless, are husband and wife. We also are each one of a set of identical twins. I, Harmon, have a twin brother, Herman. I, Lola, have a twin sister, Leela. Herman and Leela are also husband and wife. The four of us, Herman and Harmon and Lola and Leela, <laughs> live together in the same house which we own jointly. For ten years, the four of us toured the country as a singing group. But now we men are back working at our original profession. Both of us are doctors of veterinary medicine for the United States Department of Agriculture. Signed, Harmon and Lola Loveless. Finally, here we have, I think you'll agree, a small crowd of people who claim to be, each couple claims to be Harmon and Lola Loveless, who have identical twins. Let's start this first round of questioning, if you're all ready, ladies and gentlemen. We start with Polly Burke. Polly? Oh, thank you, bud. Uh, now, let me see. Number two, do I have it straight. Uh, you're Leela, and he's Herman. Ha now, you're Lola, and he's Harmon. And you have a sister named Leela, and he has a sister named... Her <laughs> I pass. <laughs> no, you can't do that on this show. Can you? you don't have to All call right. them. I didn't call them couple number one, a wife number one. All right. wife, uh, wife number one. Um, <clears throat> it says here that you were a singing group in your affidavit. Uh, where did you sing? Uh, we toured the 40 states. 40 states. Um, husband number two, did you ever work in Chicago? No. You didn't. Um, Husband number three, what's ichthyox serious? Beg pardon? What's ichthyox serious? That's a disease of fishes. No. Robert Q. Lewis. Herman number one. Uh, Harman. No, that's Harmon. Oh, Harman number one. I'm sorry. Uh, Harmon, number one. Uh, and that's Leela, number one? Lola. Lola. Lola number one. <laughs> May I ask you something? Number one, couple number one. Are you loveless? <laughs> uh, name, yes. Number two, are you loveless? Yes. Number three, couple, are you loveless? Yes, we are. We're going to break up a marriage here. <laughs> This is really Carlisle. Couple oh. number one, uh, Mrs. Mrs. Um, Lovelace. Uh, what do you call a male sheep? A male sheep? Well, they call it a buck. A what? A, a buck. buck. What do you call a male sheep, uh, Mr. Lovelace number one? A ram. And uh, what do you call a male sheep number two? Which uh, Mr. Number two. Ram. Do you call anything else? Well, number three, what do you call a tag? A tag? A tag. That's a young one. Ah. Uh, Number one, uh, does it, is it true that uh, goats eat tin cans? No, number three, is it, is it true that goats eat tin cans? No, they might eat the paper labels off them, though. <laughs> the paper labels off them. Ah. Now, Poston. Uh -huh. 
Thank you, Bud. Uh, uh, let me see. Gosh, it's so hard to choose which one to ask a question, much less which one is the right one. Let's see, Mrs. Lovelace, number two, how's that? How's the house divided? It is not divided. The house isn't divided. Well, I've got problems, too. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Lovelace, number three. Uh, was it a double ring ceremony? No. It wasn't. Did you and your brother get married at the same time? Yes. Well, I guess that made it a double ring ceremony. <laughs> That's it. It's time to vote, panel. Without consultation, as usual, mark your ballots and vote for couple number one, couple number two, or couple number three. Remember, the team of challengers will get $250 for every incorrect vote. Okay? Ballots all marked? Yes. Holly, for whom did you vote? <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> Number three, and you don't know why. Bob? Well, he didn't have to know. I didn't ask anybody else about Ixioxerius. <laughs> and he didn't have to know that, because that isn't a, an animal disease. It's a fish disease. But it's the only one I knew. <laughs> so, I don't know. <laughs> Well, I, I joined, Polly, because I've suffered from Ixial Sirius. <laughs> I thought, I really thought couple number one were too loving. I thought they were trying to kid us a little bit. And number three had a nice sort of simpatico. If you suffer from Ixial Sirius, you must be a poor fish. <laughs> <laughs> Kitty, what's your vote? I voted for number three. We all asked number three our serious questions, like they, you know, he knew Tag, he knew Ixial Sirius, whatever you call it. And um, um, so, but, but we didn't give the others the same chance. But I did vote for number three. And Tom, your vote. I did vote for number three. You all kid about that. <laughs> you all kid about that fish disease. But listen, Bob Trout had it pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he knew the uh, serious questions. I didn't and... think uh, boys could have it. I thought only gills. <laughs> well, oh. It's all right, so we're waiting. Yeah. You're giving me a haddock. For <laughs> Don't grab about it. Well, while we're floundering through the answer to that, the votes are all in, and there we are. We've had it, and as you know, both Harmon and Lola Lovelace have identical twins who are married to each other. And as a matter of fact, they are with us tonight. They're standing right upstairs there behind that curtain. So, to prove which of these three couples is the real Harmon and Lola Lovelace, let's raise the curtain. <laughs> I'm going to ask the uh, I'm going to ask the uh, the real lovelesses who are down here to go up and join the other lovelesses up there, so we can see you all together. It might be kind of nice to see just how identical you are. And there you are, ladies and gentlemen. Right up there. Thank you very much. And as it's very evident, as one of the uh, challengers said tonight, loveless in name only, I'm sure. Now, uh, couple number one, should tell us who you really are, your real names, and what you do, please? My name is Janie Warrington, and I do sales promotion work on Royal Hawaiian Macadamia Nuts for Kathleen Cook. And you, sir? My name is Thomas F. McCarthy. I'm the field representative for Copper and Brass Research Association, having just retired as Chief Inspector of Plumbing for the City of New York. Thank you, sir. Not even married. <laughs> now, this couple up here, you first, wife number three. I'm Betty Howe, and I'm the real estate business. And I'm a renting agent for Tom and Bigelow. And you, sir? I'm Leo McElroy, an advertising agency executive, recently retired, still open for consultation. <laughs> Thank you very much. And we've had a lot of fun tonight because you pulled the panel completely. There were four incorrect votes at $250 each for a total of $1,000 from Arid. And on your way out, you'll find a gift package of Carter's Fine Products for each of you. Good night and good luck. Hope you had a good time. And now, panel, let's meet our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Nadia Sakal. What is your name, please? My name is Nadia Sakal. 
What is your name, please? My name is Nadia Sakal. Now, here's the second affidavit panel. I, Nadia Sakal, was born in Beirut, Lebanon. My father is Spanish and my mother is Russian. I went to school in Switzerland. For a while, I worked in motion pictures in Italy. I have traveled extensively and I speak four languages fluently and three others passably well. My background is a help in my present job. I am a guide at the United Nations. Signed, Nadia Sakal. Three attractive young ladies this time, panel. Each one claiming to be Nadia Sakal, United Nations guide. You all set, ladies? Very well. Let's begin this cross-examination with Robert Q. Lewis. Bye. Well, they're all so charming, but I want to go back and take another guided tour. <laughs> Uh, Nadia, number one, uh, what is the name, please, of the director of protocol for the United Nations in New York? Number two. Number three. Uh, Jean Denouille. I beg pardon? Jean Denouille. I see. Number one, what is the name of the assistant director of protocol for the UN here in New York? Number two. Number three? I don't know. Okay. Uh, is the number two, is the mezzanine library in the UN building here in New York still open to the public? Yes, it is. I see. Uh, number three, uh, you say you speak four languages? Yes. Uh, would you say, what, what, uh, do you speak French? Yes. Would you say yes in French? Oui. Once more with feeling, please. Oui. <laughs> 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 Number one, where did you go to school in Switzerland? L'Ecole Internationale in Geneva. Do you know the name of the canton that um, Lausanne is in? No. Do you know the name of the canton, number two? The canton that Lausanne is in? Do you know number three? No. Number one, how long have you been a guide at the United Nations? Almost two years now. Uh, number two, can you tell me what famous cellist gave a concert there last year? I only started working. Number three, can you tell me the famous cellist? Uh, I think Pablo Casal. Number one. Tom Foster. Thank you. Uh, let see. Number two, what is the Levant? I don't believe I know. Uh, I'll ask another question. Number three, what is a play called in Italy? A play, a play, like a Broadway play. Like Golden Fleecing, how's that, Bob? Oh, pretty good there, huh? <laughs> so, what, is it, uh, uh, what is it called? What is a play called in, in Italy? Well, you say andare al teatro. Oh? It means go to the theater. <laughs> is there another word for a play, number one, do you know? Drama. Number three, what are the termini, how's that, for uh, the Orient Express? What are the two, two uh, ends of the Orient Express, or the Oriental Express? Do you know? Do you know number two? No. Number one. Hmm. I thought Termini devoured houses, don't they? No. Yeah. Uh, Polly? I'm trying to figure out how to get my album in a question. <laughs> <laughs> number one, um, uh, there's an island near Capri. What is its name? Ischia. Number two, where is Positano? Uh, Positano is near Naples. Uh, number three, uh, what's the main, the main boulevard in Rome? Via Veneto. Number one, there's a square in Rome that has two almost identical churches. What is the name of that square? Number two? Number four? I know a square named Henry, but that won't help, I'm sure. It's time to vote once again, panel. Without consultation, will you kindly mark your ballots? And, as you did before, vote for number one, number two, or number three. Everybody set? Molly, have you marked your ballot? Yes. No. <laughs> well, it's very difficult because you see, oh no, I can't vote for four because there isn't one. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> see what you do to me? No, uh, really. Uh, it's very difficult because um, I don't know whether there was really a violence last year and number three knew and whatever that question was about the head of the protocol, which number three knew whether there really was. So, yeah. mm -hmm. but anyway, she said something, and everybody else said, I don't know, which doesn't mean anything, because they might have been phony questions, but I voted for, if you can make it out, her. Number three? Yes, sir. Number three. It isn't, but that's who I vote. <laughs> I really, I just changed mine. I didn't see uh, for whom, and I realized I'd asked, excuse me, uh, 
Number. What did you do there? I did it. I didn't. Uh, I'm not cheating. Really, I'm not. <laughs> I'll, I'll go to Washington and say. I, uh, I, I. I remember that number two said something that there was that the mezzanine uh, library was open to the public. There is no mezzanine library in the U.S. <laughs> number three. I don't know. All right, number three. Two votes on number three. Kitty. Number three. Uh, there was a famous cellist called Casals who did gave, give a concert at the United Nations, and I don't know about the head of the protocol, because you I fooled me before, <laughs> but I thought that was true, too. Okay, Tom, your vote. I voted for number one, and it's He's quite right. obvious by now, I think, to everyone that I'm not as bright as the rest <laughs> of the people. <laughs> so, all right, there we have it. Once again, we voted. Let's discover now which one of these three charming young ladies is the real United Nations guy. So will the real... Nadia Sakal, please stand up. <laughs> well, the panel sort of redeemed itself this time. Thank you very much, Ms. Sakal. Number one, did you tell us your real name and what you do? Yes, my name is Lida Baldi. I was born in Italy, and I'm a private teacher here in New York. Two, may we have your real name and what you do? Christina Paolozzi, and I was born in New York, and uh, I'm production assistant for Klager Film Company. Thank you. <laughs> well, it was only one incorrect vote that time, challengers. Uh, $250 from Arid. That's the total, $250 this time. The panelists, I say, kind of redeemed themselves. You have a quick question? It has to be fast. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Robert, you would like to know what number one teaches because he would like to take from her. He can find that out later. <laughs> <laughs> has nothing to do with the diseases of fish, I oh, assure wow. you. <laughs> so, ladies, on your way out, you will find a gift package of all of Carter's fine products for each of you. Good night and good luck. Hope you had fun. <laughs> Back in a moment after an important message about your health. Uh, with the approval of all of you uh, here and watching our show, we'd like to change one the award from $250 to $500 because... Technically, uh, Bob, you shouldn't change your vote once I say, have you well, marked your ballot? So when I asked Polly for the first one, no one else should change your well, vote after that. I, I know you did it quite that. honestly, but since it is a rule, I think we'll apply it and give that last team of challenges 500 instead of 250. <coughs> and now let's uh, meet our third team of challenges. What is your name, please? My name is Cadet George T. Nolby. What is your name, please? My name is Cadet George T. Nolby. What is your name, please? My name is Cadet George T. Nolby. The third affidavit panel. I, George T. Nolby, am a cadet at the United States Air Force Academy at Colorado Springs, Colorado. In addition to my regular academy routine, I have the rather special job of Chief Falconer. The falcon is the symbol and mascot of the academy. It is my responsibility to train and care for eight of these birds. This Saturday, when the Air Force football team meets the Army team for the first time in history, we will release our falcons from the roof of Yankee Stadium for a demonstration of the ancient art of falconry. Signed, George T. Noldy. All right, panel, these three stalwart gentlemen all claim to be Cadet George T. Noldy, Air Force Academy Falconer. We'll start this round of questioning as soon as the gentlemen are ready, which I think is now with Kitty Carlisle. Kitty? Thank you. Uh, number one, what kind of a falcon is the one that uh, number two was just holding? That's a prairie falcon, ma'am. What is a peregrine, number two? A peregrine? Yes. It's, a, it's another type of falcon in the hawk family, which, of course, the falcon is. Number three, uh, what is a jest? The jest is the uh, leather tongue that uh, they hold the falcon with. And number one, how dangerous is a falcon? <laughs> Depends on uh, what do you mean, who's around it or what they can do or what? Yeah. Well, it depends on how much you train the bird. The bird can probably be uh, calm if you train enough. Number two, can you tell me um, why you have hooded falcons? Why are they generally hooded? Tom Post. <laughs> I don't know, is that why they're generally hooded? I don't know. <laughs> uh, number three, uh, could you demonstrate a falcon call? Well, there is no falcon call. How do you give your signals to a bird when it's working a field, for instance? Well, you show it the uh, lure on the uh, end of a string or a rope or something of that sort. Number two, 
Do you use falcon calls when you're working a bird? No, sir. Number one? There's a, a whistle that we use. That's right. How does it go? You, you want a demonstration of a whistle? Well, there are different calls. Give me two. Uh -huh. well, we, uh, we only know of one. <laughs> Uh, number two, do you fly? That's the way my husband calls me. <laughs> fly to his side. Polly Bergen. Well, first of all, I think this whole idea of releasing them from the roof of the stadium is a dirty way to get rid of the army, you know. <laughs> I'm, personally, but it's all right if you're going to... Uh, I assume, number one, that all of these Falcons are well-trained and there'll be no attacking of the competitive team. <laughs> They're well trained. There will be attacks. Uh, uh, number two, uh, this whistle that is used in Falcon Tree, can it be heard by the regular ear? I don't use a whistle in my train. Number three, do you use a whistle? No, I do not. You don't. Only number one knows how to whistle. Now, Robert Q. Lewis. I think number one gets a lot of birds with that whistle too. <laughs> uh, number one, what year are you in at the academy? Uh, third year. Third year. Number two. I'm a senior. Sir. You're a senior. And number three? Third year. Tell me, Colorado Springs, uh, is Jesse, number three, is Jesse's still open in Colorado Springs? The beer place? Is that still? In a, in That's a not familiar to me, sir. All right. Number one, is that still going there? I don't know of it yet. I beg pardon? I don't know of it yet. And number yeah. two? Yes. Number two? No, there's a great deal of COs in the audience. Thank you. Well, don't go there. You'll catch a fish disease, I'm sure. It's time to vote anyway, panel. So without any further questioning, will you kindly mark your ballots? It's time. And mark for number one, number two, or number three. Well, I... You all marked your ballot? Everybody oh, voted? Oh, can't be him. Okay? Everybody voted. I can't ask five or vote as you have. Holly? Oh, well, I, it really, it can't be number one, but... Uh, I mean, I just figured that there must be some way you can get the bird to come back. You know, you don't just say, hey, bird. You know? And at least he uh, is willing to whistle, which is some protection. You know? Bob, your vote, please. I voted for number three because, frankly, but again, he looked least likely. And that's the only way I can base my vote on this show. Hmm? Kitty? Well, I voted for number one. I'm always being fooled by the panel, not by the contestants. <laughs> is it true that they have to whistle? And if it is true they have to whistle, he knew about the whistle. And Tom, what about your selection? I didn't know anything about falcons at all. I voted for number two. <laughs> oh! You know why? I'll tell you why I voted for number two. Make it quick. I don't know how you could have missed it, but he had one in his hand up there. <laughs> These three gentlemen is the real cadet, George T. and Oldie. Now, will you three gentlemen please come and stand in front of your desks? And while they're doing that, I'd like to introduce to you Captain Franklin Butler of the Air Force Academy. Good evening, Captain. Now, as you undoubtedly notice, uh, Captain Butler has with him one of the trained Air Force Falcons. Now, when released, he will fly directly to the real cadet, George T. Noldy. All right, Captain Butler, will you please let the Falcon show us which is the real Cadet Noli? Ba-boom! You all know it, but the entire expense of maintaining and traveling the uh, Academy athletic teams is more than paid for by the ticket receipts from the games. And uh, that means George Noldy and uh, the football team and two classes of cadets are being flown to New York on commercial airlines at no expense to the government. Number two, would you mind telling us your real name and what you do, please? Yes, my real name is Ken George, and I'm a, a press agent in New York with John O'Malley and Associates. Thank you, sir. And number three, may I have your real name and what you do, sir? Yes, my name is Russell Powell, and I'm a life insurance broker with L.W. Rich Associates here in New York. Thank you. Now, picking up our score, there were two incorrect votes at $250 each for a total of $500. From Arid, on your way out, gentlemen, you will find there's a year's supply of Rise Instant Lather for each of you. Good night, good luck, I hope you had fun. Happy flying. Cadet George Pinoli would like to donate his share of the winnings to the Cadet Wing Welfare Fund of the Air Force Academy. 
Well, I guess that's all we have time for tonight, uh, except good night to all of you, my fine feathered friends. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Good night. And now this is Bud Collier saying good night for arid cream deodorant and reminding all of you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. <laughs> to tell the truth, Art Goodson, Bill Cogman production. In association with the CBS Television Network, Miss Virgin Down by Wilma.